There's a genre of articles that I've never talked about, but this genre is by far the worst genre ever, and it gets under my skin, unlike any other type of op-eds that we see published in large news outlets. I'm, of course, talking about the millennials and or Gen Zers are killing blank industry. Aren't they so terrible? I'll give you a couple of examples here. From the New York Post, Gen Z party poopers have ruined after work drinks. The real estate market is slowly being killed off by millennials. Yes, they are definitely choosing to do this. And the most notorious of them all was this. In 2013, Time Magazine's Joel Stein argued that millennials are the me, me, me generation who are, quote, lazy, entitled narcissists who still live with their parents. But, of course, we're going to save everyone. Yeah, go fuck yourself with that. And to top off that shit Sunday, Joel Stein actually filmed a video of himself where he tries to be quirky and explain how absurd millennials are by living as a millennial for 24 hours. And yes, it is as cringeworthy as you're expecting it to be. Let's watch. Hey, I'm Joel Stein. I'm gonna spend uh, the day trying to live like a millennial. I'm 41. Uh, I've never taped myself talking before on my phone. I did not know I looked like this. I'm not thrilled about it. I put on a millennial t-shirt. What does a millennial wear? How do you sex someone who just says the thing sexy in your text, right? Do you have time to have sex tonight? I've never really chatted uh, through Gmail before, so I opened up uh, a G-chat with my sister, and I just wrote, suck. This doesn't, that doesn't seem complicated. These are just useful tools to have out at once. So I don't feel overwhelmed by this. It's not. <laughs> Let me look up selfies so I can get an idea of what I'm trying to do. Oh, you put funny, either get naked or put funny things in your mouth. End of day. It's a bit like a millennial. Expect many more status updates. Do you like your own thing? Is that a thing? So I've been uh, sexting my lovely wife, Cassandra, and uh, I'm not very good at it. It's not been going well. Uh, I think I've ruined any chances I had at having sex tonight. I'm not getting that because I'm not allowed to use my landline. All right, I'm going to bed now after uh, a full day of trying to be a millennial. I think I liked about 15 things. I Instagrammed. What's on the list? Get this all done by one. Uh, and I failed. I didn't send 50 texts. It's a lot of work being a millennial. I have a lot more respect for them. Uh, I'm sure they'll never get any actual work done. So uh, good luck with our bridges and infrastructure. Ah, uh, yes, the quintessential millennial experience of texting our siblings sup over Gmail. That honestly was so cringeworthy that it made me want to kill myself in Roblox, of course, not in real life. But just watching that honestly put me in like a doomer state that was really difficult to get out of. So I apologize for showing that to you, but I had to. So you understand the context. This is the way that we are perceived millennials and Zoomers by older generations who don't feel as if. There's any critiques of the system itself. It's just any industry changes, any market changes. Well, we can blame millennials for that. Now, to be fair, millennials are indeed and Zoomers responsible for killing particular industries. For example, that includes casual dining, department stores, cable TV, golf, good riddance, diamonds, and even raisins. Yes, raisins. Is nothing sacred? And there are certain journalists who see these market changes and they think, wow, these millennials, they're killing these industries because they're so entitled, so stupid. But thankfully, this whole genre that I'm complaining about is beginning to change because I think that as more things regarding the planets and the environment continue to deteriorate, people are realizing that you can't just scapegoat an entire generation and now two generations with millennials and Zoomers. You actually have to look at the issues as a whole, meaning why for example, are millennials reluctant to go hang out with their colleagues after work, get an after work drink? Maybe it's because we're overworked 
and overburdened and we don't want to spend extra time with our coworkers where we're going to talk about work and all the problems at work. We'd rather have that mental space for ourselves. Why are millennials killing the real estate industry? Well, maybe it's because we don't have money. People want to buy houses, believe it or not, who are younger, but they just can't because the economy has changed. Today's economy is radically different, almost unrecognizable compared to the economy of our grandparents. But yet they don't get that. And more journalists, to be fair, are waking up, but it still is happening slowly, like that New York Post article where they don't necessarily demonize millennials so much as they explain the rationale based on anecdotes from some millennials who just say, look, I'm tired. No shit, Sherlock. It's not a huge uh, shock to learn that millennials, like all Americans, are overworked and underpaid, and we're just exhausted. Capitalism has bogged us all down, and we, we just want to have some peace before we return back to work once again. Now, thankfully, CB Insights pointed this all out explaining that millennials are in debt. They earn less, hold fewer assets, and have less wealth than members of previous generations did when they were their age, according to the Fed. Many are burdened by student loan debt as median incomes have failed to keep pace with the skyrocketing costs of four-year college programs. While American paychecks have increased over the past few decades, the purchasing power of those paychecks has remained stagnant, according to a recent Pew study. Managing money that doesn't go as far when it's not tied up in debt payments hugely affects how millennials budget and spend. Millennials value spending their money ethically. Rather than valuing lower prices above all else, 73% of millennials are willing to pay more for products or services that are sustainable or help promote a positive impact on the world. Millennials prioritize health and wellness. No generation has been more health conscious than millennials, with 9 in 10 believing that it's important to eat healthy and indulge only occasionally. Millennials are the generation most concerned with natural and and ethical food products, and they account for more than half of organic food consumption. And all of this is correct. Maybe it's not the case that millennials can't pay off their student debt or purchase homes or cars because we're spending too much money on avocado toast or Starbucks coffee. Perhaps it's because of the economic situation that we found ourselves in. Remember, our generation's present and future has been utterly decimated by capitalism, which is why more and more millennials and Zoomers are anti-capitalists. It's because our economic system is killing us, and it's killing the planet. We're not killing these industries. Capitalism is. Technology is. And so before these journalists continue to demonize millennials and Zoomers, throw an entire generation under the bus because we're so different than the previous generation because of the situation that we found ourselves in, perhaps look at the system itself and ask yourself, why would millennials not engage in the housing market? Why would millennials choose to stay home as opposed to going out with their coworkers after work? Maybe it's not us. Maybe it's the system that has completely abused us and used us, and we get nothing after putting our hard work into this system. We're exploited, underpaid, underrepresented politically. So I hate this genre of millennials and Zoomers are to blame for X. It's stupid. It's completely insufferable, and it's factually incorrect. Sure, we drive some changes. We're cutting the cord. We don't have cable TV. But we are growing up in a world where we're recovering from an economic recession, a global pandemic, and the rise of fascism, the likes of which we haven't seen since World War II in this country. So before you blame us, all I ask is that you think maybe there are external factors that have led millennials to be the way that they are. And sure, we are a generation that is different in certain ways than our predecessors, but I'd argue that all of these differences make us better, more conscious, more ethical, and more moral overall, to where we actually can acknowledge that our actions, our government's actions, they actually have consequences. What we do is going to have an impact on the rest of the world. Perhaps we're more health conscious because we know that all of these large multinational corporations are willing to cut corners to save a buck, even if that means putting our own health at risk. This is why we check the ingredients of the food that we buy. We try to purchase more ethical goods, and there's no ethical consumption under capitalism, but you've got to understand that all of these things that have changed us, I mean, it's, it's 
capitalism. We are the products of our environment. This system has molded us, and we are the way that we are because of the system. And we're trying to escape the system. We're trying to fix this system. So all that I ask is that you don't blame us. Or if you continue to blame us, as Joel Stein did, we will make fun of you in return. So you've been warned. Were you acting like a...